Hey everybody, Ingra Sparkman here from Southbridge Street Live, and I just wanted to let you guys know that we have banded together with CASA, Golden Crescent CASA of Victoria, for their annual backpack drive. Now I know it's summertime, so this is a crazy time to be thinking about school, but for organizations like CASA, they need to gather materials and supplies for children all year long. So this is it for the next couple of weeks on Southbridge Live. You're going to see that um, some of my guests will be bringing in backpacks themselves. If you also would like to donate a backpack or school supplies, you can come by our studio at 1102 North William Street, or you can call me at 361-649 one eight two five and I'll be happy to come by pick up backpacks and supplies to help support our local Golden Crescent Casa. Happy Tuesday, Victoria, and thank you guys so much for joining us on another edition of Southbridge Street Live. It is my absolute honor to introduce our next guest. This is Dave, and he is the chairman of the Victoria Photography Club Photo Contest, which is an annual contest that the Victoria Photo Club hosts every year. And right now, uh, until August the 1st, you are um, still uh, able to submit entries, correct? Till July 31st. Oh, to, to July 31st. Oh, that's awesome. Well, thank you so much and welcome to Southbridge Street Live. My so, pleasure. So I was gonna ask you straight away, um, do you consider yourself to be a professional photographer? <laughs> no, ma'am. Especially <laughs> since they went to digital. I, yes. was, I was pretty good with a 35, but mm -hmm. digital's whole different animal and then all the programs that go along with it. Right, and isn't that interesting because I sort of feel that people who can use 35 millimeter are still in my mind master photographers. Not to say that there isn't an incredible amount of skill that is involved with digital, but the old, I started to say old school, <laughs> cameras at 35 millimeter really have, still have their place. So what do you shoot with? Because I know that that's a big thing. Do you shoot with a Nikon? Or do you shoot with a Canon? My preferred <laughs> camera is a Canon. There you go. High five there. <laughs> there, there are subtle differences in them. Sure, sure. It's just like a Ford or a Chevrolet, mm. which is your favorite. Right. Probably what your parents drove. These uh -huh. these cameras, they're, they are unbelievable in their capabilities and, and what they can do. Mm -hmm. Even Even the little bitty inexpensive point and shoots are really awesome. Right. Well, and even now, too, on your phone. I mean, the cameras on your phone are pretty incredible. They are. Yeah. Seven or eight years ago, they, they would have competed for with the ca mm -hmm. digital cameras. Right, absolutely. And I think kind of the running joke with the Victoria Photography Club right away is when a new person comes into the club, it's going to be, we're going to want to know right away. Yeah. Are you a Nikon? Are you a Canon? You know, that kind of thing. But we, all in fun. Oh, all yeah. Fun. It's all in fun. We, if you shoot one brand, half the group will holler, yay. If you shoot the other brand, the other group <laughs> hollers, yay. <"Hey." laughs> That's awesome. Well, I want to know more about the Victoria Photography Club, and we'll get to the entries and the, and the contest in a minute. We're about 17 or 18 years old. I couldn't tell you for sure right offhand. We, we meet once a month, usually the third Thursday of the month. We, mm -hmm. You'd have to chip our, check our web address to make sure of where the meeting is. Mm -hmm. Occasionally it gets changed. Right, I know that in August you guys are gonna meet at the box. The box. Mm -hmm. uh, we're gonna meet at the mall in August. Oh, you're gonna meet at the mall in August, <laughs> yes. but it says that your monthly meeting is actually gonna be on the at the box. I think on the website. Mm, I don't know. We'll have to go back that. and look. Yeah. But <laughs> we meet in the mall because we'll have our display set up mm -hmm. out there. All the entries that come into the photo contest, they'll be judged. And then the top 350 will be on display out in Victoria Mall oh, for that's awesome. a week. How many members do you have currently? Uh, yeah, we're pretty close to 50. Wow, that's amazing. And all levels of photography. I want to make sure that all we, levels, we talk about from that. From yes. beginners to, mm -hmm. to professionals. Right. What would be your recommendation for someone who's just picking up a digital camera and wants to know more about shooting out of automatic, where, where would be a good place to start? We have our, at our meetings, we usually have a class during mm -hmm. the meeting. Our meetings aren't regular meetings, they're, they're educational. Right. We talk about photography, somebody that knows something, a program or a specialty mm -hmm. will get up and talk about it. They'll have printouts for you to look at. 
when we, we do field trips, we are in partnership mm -hmm. with Coletto Creek Reservoir. We'll go out there a couple of times a year and that's an excellent opportunity. You can bring your camera and find somebody that's got one, mm -hmm. not only just the brand, but maybe even the identical camera. And then you can ask them questions, walk around out on the sure. trails and take pictures. and, mm -hmm. and Work with a, different lenses. Because different that's lenses, you can thing. learn so much so fast that way. Mm -hmm. What would be like the average, you think, initial investment for someone? Mm, that's a trick question. Mm -hmm. well, <laughs> a young kid, obviously, you wouldn't want to spend too much. Mm -hmm. The Canon body or the camera bodies will act up and wear out, just like mm -hmm. any electronic device does. You want to put your money into the lenses, but a starter kit, you can start for about six or seven hundred dollars. You usually mm -hmm. get a couple of lenses and, and it's an excellent way to get started. Mm -hmm. What about with your with your cell phone? Do you guys have many people there that are still working with their cell phone or most people in your club do shoot with actual digital or a point and shoot cameras we yeah. i think everybody uses the mm -hmm. the digital camera oh, you have so much more control the, over right, it the clarification and right. the the uh, with the addition of lenses mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. this is a great opportunity too for um i think for people to have an opportunity to meet like-minded um artists or um, life like-minded hobbyist to say okay what is the best lens for XYZ and have you tried that's one of the things that I feel like is one of the greatest benefits about being in the Victoria Photography Club is you have experts or at least you have people at different levels that can kind of guide you because you can make some costly mistakes you know absolutely but for the most part photography is fun yeah and it's been just a fascinating journey I feel and not to take away from the digital cameras, right. uh, there are phones. It's I've seen some amazing shots on the right. phones. Right. We have uh, great people in the club, mm -hmm. a lot of professionals that can share a lot of knowledge with you in a hurry. We used to take a lot of trips. We've slowed down the last few years, but we need to start planning more. We've been out to Big Bend. We've been up to the wildlife refuge up in Oklahoma. Mm -hmm. We've been up into New really? Mexico. Oh, so you guys actually take extended trips on, on occasion yeah, as well. Yeah, we've taken some trips and, and you have to pay your own way, but, right. but you're with other photographers and mm -hmm. maybe somebody knows that area real well and can, right. can be a guide too. What did you, did you go to New Mexico? Yes, I did. Okay, all right, so I'm gonna ask you some biographical stuff now. What did you, what was your primary focus or objective when you were in New Mexico, what did you what did you take pictures of the most? Um, the, the night we got there, we went right after Thanksgiving and we were spending a week up there. And the night we got there and we were up on a hill, <laughs> it snowed. Right. And being from South Texas, you know, right, right downhill to the, get out of there. We had a lot of wildlife running mm -hmm. around the house. We were in some, some awesome deer and, and birds. We took bird feeders with us and seed to to attract them and the birds can smell food a long ways off. Uh, so one way to attract good. birds is with peanut butter. They like the mm -hmm. smell of peanut butter in addition to seeds and stuff. And we, we, uh, we had a great time. It was amazing how you can set up and, and out in the, almost in the wilderness like that and, and make your own little set for, mm -hmm. to bring in the birds, which way is the light sure. I'll set up over here. So the light comes over. Mm -hmm. It's pretty fascinating. Is nature your favorite genre of photography? Not mine. <laughs> right. I do enjoy it and I appreciate mm -hmm. how difficult it is. And, and I, like, uh, I like the raptors, the birds mm -hmm. that are raptors. My favorite is still photography, the old buildings and stuff, mm -hmm. falling down wooden structures, windmills. I like to shoot the old steam trains that are up in Colorado. I'll go up there every couple of years and chase them around and get a lot mm -hmm. of photos of them. Do you ever still shoot with your 35 millimeter? Uh, no, ma'am, I don't. There's not a real good place to get mm -hmm. film developed anymore that you've got control over it. Right. If you send it off to one of the super stores, mm -hmm. they don't change their chemicals as often as they should. Same right. thing for printing. I use uh, Mr. Korchinski here in town That's to what I was gonna ask develop you. all of, or to print all sure. of my I think, I think I wouldn't be, um, you know, arguably the, the most popular place for professional photographers to have their um, prints printed in Victoria locally would be Krachinsky's. Yes. And I know that he's also like actively involved too as a way to give back to the community photographers. Doesn't he sponsor 
um, prizes and things like that with your um, he does. contest. Oh, cool. He's, he's a, a, a sponsor. Mm -hmm. And if you take your print to him and it needs a slight adjustment, you mm -hmm. know, and you're, you tell him that, you know, to, to call you or something, he will. Hey, I think mm -hmm. it needs a little of this and a little of that. And, and you can't beat Mr. Kaczynski. He's, right, uh, he's quite a professional. He shares his knowledge. Service, and, yeah. and he's given away mm -hmm. s several prizes where they're called the Kaczynski Awards. Oh, really? The first prize will be a 16 by 20 stretched canvas print. Mm -hmm. Second prize will be a 16 by 20 watercolor. Mm -hmm. And third prize will be a 16 by 20 mounted print. All right, so let's let's segue into the annual contest. The submission dates are between July 1st, July 31st, mm -hmm. and the entries can be dropped off at Korchinski's. At Korchinski's. Okay, cool, I'm just reading that, which is at 105 Cozy Circle in, here in Victoria. There's gonna be more than $1,500 in combined prize money. Um, will be awarded to the adult and student divisions. So let's talk about what constitutes an adult and student division first. High school kids and down are considered uh, adult, I mean a, a student. student. Yes, sir. And anything above, if you're out of high school, you're considered a, a, an adult. The student division, you char we charge $3 per print. You can enter as many as you want. There's just one big category. In the adult division, we've got nine different categories. Okay. That's six dollars a print. You can get any as many as you want. Mm -hmm. And in the student division, you cannot compete for best of show. You have to be in the adult division. Okay, I see for that. Okay, so let's talk about the nine categories: animals and fauna. That's one. Yep. Birds, building and structures, which I know you said was your favorite because it's the BS category, which <laughs> I just thought was hilarious. There's close up and macro. There's creative. There's flowers, plants landscape and scenic, miscellaneous, and people and portraits. So let me ask you, not to put you on the spot, but give me an example of miscellaneous. Miscellaneous would be anything that doesn't fall into the other categories. Okay, I gotcha. <laughs> My train pictures <laughs> I go see. in miscellaneous. Oh, okay, we go in miscellaneous, I see. Our uh, creative is when you get mm -hmm. digitally enhanced, you know, sure. really doctoring it up, making right. it obvious mm -hmm. that you've done something to the photograph. Sure. Our close-up and macro, that would be something larger than it actually is in real life. Right. Like bugs and spiders mm -hmm. and, and things like that. I mean, mm -hmm. we've had some unbelievable spider pictures. Mm -hmm. Well, they see, look. we're really familiar with macro here because we have a host, Jim Feig, who's a photography teacher, yeah. as I know you know, and he hosts a Macro Monday every Monday morning on Southbridge Street Live where he actually does a macro shot and he has people from all over Victoria and surrounding counties try to guess what the macro is. So we're very familiar with, with um, macro photography at Southbridge. Birds, we've got a huge bird group. It's always right. amazing some of the photographs the, the birders get. Mm -hmm. um, and it's, it, it's amazing how everybody has got their own specialty. Mm -hmm. Can we talk a little bit about Photoshop? Because as I, as I have learned over the course of the last few years, that um, there is an element to, in some photography, even some of the best work, where there is some minor Photoshop. So there is not a penalty for minor Photoshop, but excessive Photoshop would immediately go into creative, the obvious. Okay, but, but what you're saying is, is that you're not judged against minor Photoshop? Yes, I'm, almost everybody Mm -hmm. uses Photoshop. I do right. not. I don't practice it. Sure. I know some, some <clears throat> professional photographers. You, like uh, I'm not real good with computers, period. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you, you practice it. You learn it. You got to practice it or you lose it. Mm -hmm. we, we have the idea of don't ask, don't tell. Right. <laughs> if sure. somebody's not very good at Photoshop, it's going to show up in their photos mm -hmm. and their judges are going to mark them down for it because we all have professional judges that are outstanding and they see something that's not that they can tell has been worked on, they're going to mm -hmm. mark it down. Mm -hmm. The people that are real good in Photoshop, you can't tell they did anything. Right, exactly. And that is in the skill set itself, too, and judged accordingly. It, it is. To some, you know, to some. Well, do these judges... Okay, so we'll, we'll keep going, though. So I wanted to ask you about um, these, these three qualified judges will be selecting the winner of photographs based on technical merit, impact, composition and suitability of category. Mm -hmm. So those are the basis. And then what are the, you know, you said best of show. 
So a student, which won't be in the student category. The no. student category will be just one. It will be first, second, and third. First, first, second, and third. Okay, All cool. the different categories have a first, second, and third. I see. The first place winners of out of each of the adult divisions will be taken out after they're all judged. Those mm -hmm. nine will be put up for the judges to look at. The judges don't talk when they're doing judging. Mm -hmm. They're sitting in a dark room looking at viewing the entries on a shadow box that's got mm -hmm. daylight lights in it. And it's staggering well, how some of them look. You'll look at them beforehand and ah, that's a pretty good picture. Mm -hmm. When it's in a dark room and those daylight lights hit it, man, mm -hmm. some of those really pop. Mm -hmm. And it, it almost, where'd that picture come from? I didn't see that when we were going through them. Mm -hmm. But the judges will set up all the first place winners from each division and then they'll talk. Well, I like this one. Oh, I don't like that one. Usually they turn down a few to start mm -hmm. with and get about three that they start really discussing yeah. and yeah I like this part but I don't like that and and that's how the best of show is awarded are there some tips that you would offer to some photographers who are interested in submission <laughs> I have learned over the years I am not a good judge <laughs> <laughs> what I like a lot of people don't like and and what mm -hmm. some of the judges like I can't for the life of me figure out but right. but it's uh, it's you know a wow factor is a big thing right. when you see it. Oh, man. I, and if it's a photograph you see that you like, oh, man, I wish I had a print of that. That's a good photo. I see. Okay, good. Mm -hmm. So to go with what your impact is, your mm -hmm. emotional impact as a photographer when you're seeing a particular photo of interest. Yes. Okay, cool. That is great advice. That's absolutely great advice. So what about, um, you know, going back into the 35 millimeter, I'm, I'm obsessed with this. I'm sorry, I keep going back to it. But do you kind of feel that photographers now are missing some advantage of, um, of learning the camera truly because Photoshop has made some of that technical stuff, like, you know, light metering and, you know what I'm saying, exposure and things like that. I think it would be cool that anybody who is ever interested in photography should be handed a 35 millimeter and, and said, you know, let's work with this for a couple of months just so you could get the feel. Like, I'm sad that there aren't dark rooms still in everybody's, you know what I'm saying, garages and stuff anymore. Like, I'm sad that that's a lost art printing the disadvantage of the 35 millimeter is you don't know what you have till you get it developed. Sure. Whereas with a digital camera, right. almost all of them have a screen on the back. Right, exactly. <laughs> and after you take the picture, you can look at that and say, oh, yes. I should have let more light so in. You're or not, I so you're, I can faster. tell that you're not, you are just fine with 35 millimeters going away. Well, <laughs> I, I've lost the war there. <laughs> Okay. There's no place gotcha. to get them printed. Touche, touche. And, and yes. Mr. Kaczynski doesn't do film anymore, so right. you yes. have lost total control, and, and mm -hmm. you you have a big advantage with a digital that you can see. Mm -hmm. Film is real cheap for digitals. It was expensive for 35. Oh, I remember. I had a, a real good friend tell me one time that was a real good photographer, if you can get one good picture out of a roll of film, you've done well. Right, well, right. Now they throw that away and take another picture. Take it up, take thousands it and thousands yes. of pictures. You don't like them? Delete them. Didn't cost mm -hmm. you anything. Start over. Have There's, you ever done? Have you ever done like really like eccentric photography? Like have you ever shot craters in the moon? Have you ever done with the you with, know macro? Like I have spiders? with the lenses. Yeah. I have. I can do pretty good macro. I've got lenses mm -hmm. for that. But to shoot the moon, you got to have a pretty big big lens. A lot of mm -hmm. money tied up into it to really get. Right good photos of that. It is amazing what you can do mm -hmm. when you buy a camera from Best Buy or online or something. You're going to get what's called consumer grade lenses. Okay. They're, they're pretty good. They're inexpensive. They're good to learn with. Mm -hmm. But the first time you, you buy, or if you're out like with us mm -hmm. on a trip somewhere and the guy next to you has got a, a factory big lens, as we call them, and you swap lenses with him and you shoot a couple shots of that, there's a hook in there your you mouth. <laughs> <laughs> there is no substitute for those high dollar lenses. For those high dollar lenses. It's just yeah. like how fast you want your car to go. How mm. much money do you have? Sure. Same thing with lenses. Gotcha. How big a lens you want, how much money you got. Uh, but they are staggering how mm -hmm. much better quality. Mm -hmm. No, I agree. Absolutely. So um, is there anything left that you wanted to talk about? Anything that you wanted them for? One of time? our other sponsors is uh, Coletta Creek Reservoir. We've worked with them in the past. We go out and help set up 
trails out there. There's, that's an excellent place to go shoot wildlife. It's, it's used to being around people and you can, mm -hmm. you can get pretty close to the deer or the birds. They have some raptors out there. They are a sponsor. They're giving away a annual pass to be given to people that have entered our contest mm -hmm. the night that we meet in Victoria Mall. I think it's the 15th. Yes, August the 15th at 7 mm -hmm. p.m. The Victoria Club will meet in Victoria Mall for our monthly meeting. The Coletta Creek Reservoir has given us an annual pass to be given away at the meeting to one of the persons that has entered our photo contest. Oh, that's very cool. So there'll cool. be a draw, drawing that night. You yeah. don't have to be present to win. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Well, thank you so much, Dave, for coming and, and telling us all about the Victoria Photography Club. And I hope that you guys will catch up with them at one of their monthly meetings. Look for them online or on Facebook. And then entries are to be uh, left at Krichinski's between now and July the 31st. Yep. Wonderful. And then the big display at the mall, which is always one of my favorite things. Yeah, Just a, a community thing that happens yearly that I'm always looking for. Do you have one other question? Do you have any other contests throughout the year? Now, I know that you guys have monthly contests within the club. Yep. But is this your big one? This is our big the one. The big one. And it's open to everybody. Oh, open to Not everyone. Not just our members, that. but everybody. We've got people that, from out of state that send us different type, uh, oh, different really? entries. Oh, that's interesting. That's fascinating. Well, again, thank you so much for your time today. Um, and thank you all so much for watching Southbridge Street Life.